Hello, everybody. It is me, Pacific. Well, happy Monday, everybody. I wanted to tell you, went to the thrift store on Saturday and made off with a little haul. Found a couple of great books. Wanted to show everybody. Charles Swindoll, The Mystery of God's Will. What does he want for me? 98 cents for paperbacks. There's a hardback. These were, I believe, 98 cents for the small ones, $1.98 for the large ones. So you want to be like Christ. Eight essentials to get you there, Charles Swindoll. And this one's called A Better Country Preparing for Heaven by Dan Schaefer. This one is... What picture comes to mind when you think about heaven? Most of us have heard that heaven is a wonderful place and everyone wants to go there, but we don't know much else about it. Maybe you've decided, like author Dan Schaefer once did, that there is little that can be known about heaven in this life, so there really isn't much point speculating. He observes, I think if the truth were known, many Christians are at best ambivalent or at worst afraid of heaven, or at least of the vision they have in their mind. We're far more attached to earth than we think. This may partly explain why it can be so hard to get Christians to think beyond this earthly life to greater spiritual realities. That caught my interest because, you know, for a long time, the church came up with the cute little axiom, well, he's so heavenly minded, he's no earthly good. I debate that. If somebody is properly heavenly minded, they're going to be a lot more earthly good than if they're earthly minded and think. I, I, I am shocked at how many Christians I hear say in the United States that, oh, I'm not ready to die. I'm like, really? You think that this earth is great to be? I mean, we're here for a reason. But if any time God wants to punctuate history for me and say, Civic, you got six months and you're going home. I'm sorry, but I'm going to be doing a little boogity boogity dance and saying, oh yeah. The true heart of a true converted child of God should always be to go home. To be with Christ. To be done with our struggles with ourself. With the sin and Satan's influence, and all the ungodly stuff in the world. I have the book in Washington. It's a paperback, and I was shocked. I saw another paperback in the store, but then I looked a little further up the shelf this Saturday, and I found this. The magnum opus for Bible study for the true student of the word. The two Babylons, or the papal worship, proved to be the worship of Nimrod and his wife. 61 woodcut illustrations from Nineveh, Babylon, Egypt, Pompeii, etc. By the late Reverend Alexander Hislop, this book was published in 1916. Let me read you the inside cover jacket by Donald Gray Barnhouse. By the way, this is a very nice book. I couldn't believe how excellent shape the jacket cover is. This, this is old. <laughs> The Two Babylons is one of the great books in the Christian literature of apologetics. It is written in the classical style with a wealth of material in the footnotes buttressing the facts brought forth in the arguments. Some people may wish to throw aside a book because it has been written more than half a century. But in this case, they would be foolish. The pretensions of the Roman Catholic Church are old pretensions and frequently they are based on old arguments. The author of The Two Babylons demonstrates that almost all the practices of the Roman cult have been brought over from paganism. When we come to see that worship or veneration is the same thing, of the Virgin Mary is really the worship of Venus, Astarte, and it comes from Babylon, the center of the system is revealed to be satanic. Image worship is increasing in the Roman Catholic Church, even in the United States. If inclined to doubt this, find out why it is that a statue of the Virgin of La Salette is considered more favorable than the statue of the Virgin of Lords, or vice versa. Why the Virgin in the Algiers Cathedral is a negress, and why the Jesuits push for the proclamation of the error that there is one mediator between Christ and man, and that, that is Mary, mediatrix, by all means, circulate this book. Donald Gray House, Donald Gray Barnhouse, D.D. 
The Two Babylons by Reverend Alexander Hislop. This amazing volume proves the papal worship to be actually the worship of Nimrod and his wife, complete in every detail. The introduction notes that the providence of God's conspiring with the word of God by light pouring in from all quarters makes it more and more evident that Rome is, is in very deed the Babylon of the apocalypse, that the essential character of her system, the grand objects of her worship, her festivals, her doctrine and discipline, her rites and ceremonies, her priesthood and their orders have all been derived from ancient Babylon. And finally, that the Pope himself is truly and properly the lineal representative of Belshazzar. This volume offers proof for every statement, including more than 260 original sources of facts, citing title and place and date of publications of each. Illustrated with 61 woodcuts from Nineveh, Babylon, Egypt, Pompeii, and other ancient lands. First published as a pamphlet in Edinburgh in 1853. The two Babylons was greatly expanded in 1858, and since that time has appeared in many editions in Great Britain and the United States. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to actually, I started last night, I'm going to read this straight through. When I had it before, I just picked it place because I was shocked. I saw all this references to Christmas and Easter stuff, and I was like, wow. Let's see, Let's see, here's here's a whole chapter called Christmas and Lady Day. And let me give you some excerpts on this. This is in chapter three. If Rome be if Rome be indeed the Babylon of the Apocalypse and the Madonna enshrined in her sanctuaries be the very Queen of Heaven, for the worshiping of whom the fierce anger of God was provoked against the Jews in the days of Jeremiah, it is of the last consequences that the facts should be established beyond all possibility of doubt, for that being once established, everyone who trembles at the word of God must shudder at the very thought of giving such a system, either individually or nationally, the least countenance or support. Something has been said already that goes far to prove the identity of the Roman and Babylonian systems, but at every step the evidence becomes still more overwhelming. That which arises from comparing the different festivals in particularly, in peculiarly so. The festivals of Rome are innumerable, but five of the most important may be singled out for elucidation, viz. Christmas Day, Lady Day, Easter, the Nativity of St. John, and the Feast of the Assumption. Each and all of these can be proved to be Babylonian. And first, as to the festival in honor of the birth of Christ, or Christmas, how comes it that the festival was connected with the 25th of December? There is not a word in the scriptures about the precise day of his birth or the time of the year when he was born. What is recorded there implies that at what time soever his birth took place, that it could not have been in the 25th of December. Excuse me. <clears throat> at that time that the angel announced his birth to the shepherds of Bethlehem, they were feeding their flocks by night in the open fields. Now, no doubt the climate of Palestine is not so severe as the climate of this country, but even there... Though the heat of the day be considerable, the cold of the night from December to February is very piercing. And it was not the custom for the shepherds of Judea to watch their flocks in the open fields later than about the end of October. It is in the first degree incredible, then, that the birth of Christ could have taken place at the end of December. There is great unanimity <clears throat> among commentators on this point. Besides Barnes, Doddridge, Lightfoot, Joseph Scaliger, and Jennings in his Jewish antiquities, who are all of opinion that December 25th could not be the right time of our Lord's nativity, the celebrated Joseph Mead pronounces a very decisive opinion to the same effect. After a long and careful disquisition on the subject, among other arguments, he adduces the following. At the birth of Christ, every woman and child was to go to be taxed at the city whereto they belonged, whether some had long journeys, but the middle winter is not fitting for such a business, especially for women with child and children to travel in. Therefore, Christ could not have been born in the depth of winter. Again, at the time of Christ's birth, the shepherds lay abroad watching with their flocks in the time in the night time. But this was not likely to be in the middle of winter, and if any shall think the winter's wind was not so extreme in these parts, let him remember the words of Christ in the gospel, pray that your flight be not in the winter. If the winter was so bad a time to flee, and it seems no fit time for shepherds to lie in the field, in, and women and children travel in. Indeed, it is admitted by the most learned and candid writers of all parties that the day of our Lord's birth cannot be determined. Excuse me. And that... Within the Christian church, no such festival as Christmas was ever heard of till the 3rd century, 
and that not till the fourth century was far advanced did it gain much observance. How then did the Roman church, Romish church fix on December 25th as Christmas Day? Why thus, long before the fourth century and long before the Christian era itself, a festival was celebrated among the heathen at that precise time of the year in honor of the birth of the sons of the Babylonians, Queen of Heaven. And it may fairly be presumed that in order to conciliate the heathen and to swell the number of the nominal adherents of Christianity, the same festival is adopted by the Roman Church, giving it only the name of Christ. This tendency on the part of Christians to meet paganism halfway was very early developed, and we find Tertullian, even in his day, about the year 230, bitterly lamenting the inconsistency of the disciples of Christ in this respect and contrasting it with the strict fidelity of the pagans to their own superstition. By us, says he, who are strangers to the Saturnalia and the Feast of January, the Brumalia and the Matronalia are now frequented. Gifts are carried to and fro, New Year's Day with uproar. Oh, how much more faithful are the heathen to their religion, who take special care to adopt no solemnity from the Christians. Upright men strove to stem the tide, but in spite of all their efforts, the apostasy went on till the church, with the exception of a small remnant, was submerged under pagan superstition. That Christmas was originally a pagan festival is beyond all doubt. That the time of the year and the ceremonies with which it is still celebrated prove its origin. In Egypt, the son of Isis, the Egyptian title for the Queen of Heaven, was born at this very time, about the time of the winter solstice. The very name by which Christian, Christmas is popularly known among ourselves, Yule Day, proves at once its pagan and Babylonian origin. Yule is a Chaldee name for the infant or little child, and as the 25th of December was called by our pagan Anglo-Saxon ancestors, Yule Day, or the Child's Day, and in the night they preceded it, Mother Night. <clears throat> long before they came in contact with Christianity. That sufficiently proves its real character. Far and wide in the realms of paganism was his birthday observed. This festival had been commonly believed to have had only an astronomical character, referring simply to the completion of the sun's yearly course and the commencement of a new cycle. But there is an indubitable... Wait a minute. This is very fine print, so forgive me. But there is indubitable evidence that the festival in question had a much higher reference than this, that it is commemorated not merely the figurative birthday of the sun and the renewal of its course, but the birthday of the grand deliverer among the Sabaeans of Arabia, who regarded the moon and not the sun as the visible symbol of their favorite object of their idolatry. The same period was observed as the birth festival. Thus we read in Stanley's Sabaean philosophy on the 24th, <coughs> Of the tenth month, that is December, according to our reckoning, the Arabians celebrated the birthday of the Lord, that is, the moon. Folks, I'm not going to go any further because I want to whet the student of the word, his appetite, to dig deeper and find out the punchline. Hold on. Allergies, they always do this. When Pacific became a Christian in 1985, one of the first things that hit me very fast was that I started understanding the Bible. And I read it and read it and consumed it. And it was amazing. When the Israelites were in the desert, the wilderness, you know, for 40 years, and they got bit by the snakes. And God told Moses, make a serpent on a bronze pole. When the people look up to the serpent, they will be healed. That was a picture of Christ. When we look up to Christ on the stake, on the cross, that is, we will be healed. That looking is not just a, a, a visual, <clears throat> but that looking is with our heart fixed that that is our Savior. My channel is going to move more into a direction of trying to equip the saints with stuff. And less and less about <clears throat> the beavis and buttheads of the internet.
And the Beavis and Buttheads will always be here. But if we stick to the word and we stick to truth, even they will get tired of hearing this stuff and wander off. The Beavis and Buttheads of the Internet, <clears throat> this is too deep for them. You will never catch them reading this kind of material. You will never catch them discussing this kind of material because it goes like a 747, <sighs> hair blowing in the wind, etc. Pacific is returning back to his roots of the discipline of reading. I had YouTube on listening to music last night while listening to this and then fielding a phone call. By the way, Pacific now has a girlfriend. We're going to talk less about my personal life. And we're going to talk more about the things I'm learning and try to give people. I've gotten numerable letters in the last week. People telling me the value of this channel and the value that this channel has had more than any other is several people admitted it is you that got me to read this one. It is you that got me to dig deeper into the word. At the end of the day, there's only one thing that matters with any of us. What is any one of us doing to point others towards the eternal? It doesn't matter how many houses and lands and degrees and titles and how much good looks you have and how much bank account and investment portfolio. At the end of the day, only one thing really matters at all. Did you bring glory to God? Did I bring glory to God? <clears throat> In this day and age, too many people are bringing glory to themselves. And the young people today have scarcely an interest in God, though there are people on my channel that are young, that are disturbed by what they see in prevailing humanity at this present time. And I'm challenging all of the 20-something-year-olds that are, that are turning their heart towards God, don't give up. If you really want to enlighten yourself, you're going to have to take the time to get into this old stuff and the old language. Because, as they say, if we don't learn from history, we're bound to repeat it. <clears throat> I'm going to summarize, as brief as I can, one fact that we all need to be aware of. That from the beginning of creation to the end, <coughs> excuse me, there is, there is one scarlet thread that runs through Scripture. The scarlet thread being of Christ's redemptive blood. From the beginning of creation till the end, there is also a more sinister, ungodly, evil, satanic, cloaked in darkness thread that runs. And it is called Babylon. It's reading in the Bible that after Noah's ark rested, the generations after Noah that Nimrod went to the plains of Shinar, and the plains of Shinar, Nimrod was there. The people all had one language. I just read that. God scattered them. It's amazing that people have a bent on rebelling God. <clears throat> and we can reduce that right down to present day. When you see the behavior of people on the Internet, when you see the behavior of people in politics, you see the behavior of police beating people, overstepping their authority. When we see corruption at all levels, they all have one master, Satan. When we talk about Christmas, <clears throat> and, and, and I, I really don't care about a bunch of women that are overly sensitive getting butt hurt <clears throat> because they like their little Christmas tree and their warm, fuzzy, iconic monuments that are attached to that. But for a true woman of God to embrace Christmas... For a true woman of God to endure and put up with any of the trappings and connections to paganism is to be biblically illiterate at best. That my belief about Christmas is not simply an opinion, it is rooted in historical fact. The Bible says in Revelation, come out from her, my people, that you share not in, your, in her sins. I was watching a video on the sinking of the Oceanos, the Greek cruise ship that sank off the coast of Africa back in the 90s. <clears throat> and then I watched another video where they're diving on the wreck. They had a very fascinating piece of music that they overlaid over it, and it was Enigma. This book talks about a quote 
that shows up in Jeremiah, it shows up in Revelation, mystery. And the Bible says, Paul talks about the mystery of iniquity. I was reading last night where the secrecy, the requirement of confessing to the priests, and the priests having absolute authority to <clears throat> tell the parishioner, well, this is the sin you did, this is what you must do, or I forgive, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to get into an argument with Catholics over their religion. It's a fool sport. Catholicism is a religion. It is not Christianity. The Bible says, call no man your father, except your heavenly father. We are never told to venerate, to worship, to look at, to view Mary as the mother of God. Do your study with this book and other manuscripts, and you will find that the mother of God, the queen of heaven, which shows up in Jeremiah, <clears throat> we're rapidly heading towards female goddess worship in our world today. Isis. We talk about ISIS and their destructive means, and their terrorism. Look at the word ISIS, <clears throat> trace its origins. We talk about Easter. Easter is just a watered down word of basically worshiping the female deities of those days. I find it interesting that most serious students of the word today don't spend a lot of time dealing with the origins of Roman Catholicism. In fact, many evangelicals, including Bill Bright, Billy Graham, Chuck Colson, and scores of others, J.I. Packer, he wrote a fascinating book called Knowing God Deep. But they all played footsie with the Catholic Church and put the rounding endorsement on it, ignoring the fact that the Catholic Church has 100 anathemas being cursed, against those of us that are evangelicals. <laughs> the Bible very clearly says Jesus Christ is our great high priest. When you get into the New Testament, it talks about the commissioning or the ordination of pastors, elders, deacons, overseers. Not once is the word priest mentioned as an office in the church. Jesus is our great high priest. What most Catholics don't realize is when that temple curtain was rent from top to bottom, the Holy of Holies in the temple of God that was off limits to the common man was now made wide open through the only mediator, Jesus Christ. There is no way <clears throat> to the Father but through Christ. The Catholic Church is not the gate. Jesus himself said in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. The implication there is that Jesus is on the outside of every man and woman's heart. And he's knocking. Notice he doesn't kick the door and notice he doesn't grab the knob. In fact, there's some paintings of what people think that Christ looked like standing outside a door with no knob on the outside. It's because the person on the inside has the knob. Just to turn it and open it. If any man hear my voice, I will come in and open the door. A lot of evangelism gets it wrong by shouting on street corners and buttonholing people. Did you know you need to be saved? You're going to hell. Yeah, that works. <clears throat> Everybody I've talked to, they've heard that knocking. They felt that God was working on them. You as an individual have to Turn that knob, open the door, and say, okay, Jesus, come in. <clears throat> Every false religion in the world has one thing in common, and most people don't realize this. I don't care if it's the Mormon Church, the Jehovah's Witnesses, and variations of cross-cult slash evangelical, like 
the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They all deny Jesus Christ. The Mormons, <clears throat> they don't believe Jesus Christ was one God. They believe in polytheism, the belief in many gods. So do the ancient religions. Mormonism is nothing new. Nothing new at all. In fact, it's either in Japan or China that the word Mormon means Satan. So they have a real hard time getting a foothold over there. Jehovah's Witnesses deny the Trinity, even though it's implicit in Scripture. Elohim, in the first opening statement of the God in the Bible, says, in the beginning, God, that word is Elohim. In the Hebrew, Elohim means plurality. When you say Pacific, there's not plurality. It's singular. It's interesting that God's name denotes plurality. It's the Godhood. It's the Trinity. And he even goes on further in Genesis saying, let us. Was he talking to men? No, they weren't created yet. Was he talking to the angels? Nope. The angels did not make and part were not partakers in the creation in, in the in the helping of the design and putting it all together. God did it all. So the let us is referring to Father, Son, Holy Ghost. When we talk about Babylon in Revelation 17 and 18, read the description, read this book. <clears throat> I mentioned to you the fact he's got all the footnotes, citing sources. It is interesting that a Jehovah's Witness at work has said, have you heard of this book? I said, yes, I have. He says, I'm amazed that most people don't even know about it. I said, me too. What's even more troublesome in American cultural Christianity, men and women I know that want to give Christmas a big group hug refuse to read this book. They do so at their own peril. We all struggle with sins of the flesh. We all struggle with things. But I'll tell you what, if you're going to say you're a committed follower of Christ and you refuse to get into stuff that exposes the origins of the things that you participate in because you don't want to hear it and you want to give all your little Christianized excuses like Jesus is a reason for the season and it brings my family together and we focus on Christ. No. The focus in Christmas is not Jesus Christ. That is hogwash. People are caught up in trees, shopping malls, spending money, gifts, eggnog, warm, fuzzy feelings. Burl and, you know, what, what, what's the, Burl eyes. Bing Crosby. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. And courier knives, little idyllic settings. I'm not going to take the time to henpeck what we already know. That Scandinavian, European, and American, and Canadian Christmases are really into winter. <clears throat> Sleighs and sleds and frosted window panes and snowmen and Santa Claus and reindeer and how cutesy is that? None of that has a thing to do with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was not born next to a lean-to fort with kids throwing snowballs. Jesus Christ was not born in a sleigh, like your winter setting, but realize the traditions that you honor while nullifying the commands of God. We're living in a day and age where the internet and the media culture has developed a serious ADD. Not many 20-something-year-olds in American culture will even take the time to read this. Fact. <clears throat> if you want to deepen your walk with Christ, if you want to feel a little more conviction for your sin, 
We need to get an awareness. And when God talks about idolatry in the Old Testament, that's not something that just ended at the book of Malachi. And now we're in the Christian era. We don't do idols anymore. We are steeped in idolatry and traditions that have been handed down from ancient days. Nimrod is alive and well, folks. If after reading this book, you want to celebrate and defend your pagan religious customs and call them Christians, you're a fool. It's not that, Christ, it's not that Pacific is a bah humbug approach to things. I celebrated Christmas. I was a kid. I got a toy train set under a tree. But I noticed something. When the world all gets behind something, regardless of culture, whether it's the Philippines or Mexico or the U.S. or Canada or Australia, and these same are yelling Jesus Christ as a cuss word, but they get all drippy over Christmas. And I hear Christians just in their naivety say, well, look, it brings everybody... <laughs> Brings everybody together for what? Christmas is more about euphoric than it is about cerebral. Women have a very hard time letting go of little things that cause emotional heart ties. Why do you think women have a very hard time when they do love a man and that man jilts them or cheats on them? The woman is focused on that atrocity for the rest of her life. Women were made much more different than us men. And when they get their heart around something, all the intelligence, all the manuscripts, all the books in the world will not release them from their bondage to their heart connections. To every woman that wants to follow her heart, I submit to you this verse. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse number two, for the sake of your traditions, you nullify the commands of God. I don't care how good it feels. Feelings is not the barometer for determining whether something is true. We hear expressions like, something told me this isn't right. I didn't feel it in my heart. Yes, sometimes. We need to base our convictions on truth. And I will tell you what, if you strip away <clears throat> the euphoric-based denominations that pimpolate the land in America, you'd have a lot of people not going to church. The whole charismatic chaos movement. Mostly fanned into flame by women. Speaking in tongues and signs and wonders. And to the end of the service, after a bunch of hoopla and running around, jumping over pews and sha ba da ba da ba da ba da scooby doo doo Nothing has happened. Hoopla. <clears throat> but to find men and women today in Christendom that are serious students of the word, very minuscule in numbers. That in America, people are more about feeling good, getting a dose of euphoricness after the Christian rock concert they just went to, And you will be branded by evangelicals today. Boy, you're negative. Why are you finding fault with other religions? Why are you doing that? I didn't set out to find fault with the Catholic Church. When I was a Christian, I was shocked by other Christians telling me, well, they're Christians too. They just believe a little differently. And I, I accepted that. Until I stumble on this until I stumble on the religions of Petra and other manuscripts and books, and I go, whoa. And then you look at our date. Our date's all screwed up by one of the popes. The Catholic Church 
is not some neutral false belief system. The Catholic Church plays very prominent in world affairs. The Catholic Church, the, starting from the Vatican, had rat lines for the Nazi war criminals in Germany to funnel them off to Argentina so they didn't have to face trial. The Catholic Church is not a neutral entity. And it's interesting that world leaders meet with the Pope. They don't meet with Chuck Swindoll. They don't meet with Joe Saint or Sally Saint. Why the Pope? It's interesting that the Bible uses terminology. The kings of the earth committed fornication with her. What's that? Is it literal sex? No. What did, what, did, what did God tell the Israelites in the Old Testament? You go a whoring after other gods. Don't think American Christians are exempt from this. Americans say, we don't worship idols. We don't bow down to poles and stuff. Nope. You just bow down to Asherah poles, a.k.a. Christmas trees, and you bedeck it with stuff. More little idols that you spend. we got a world full of poverty, and you're spending money on trinketism to hang on trees. How stupid is that? I'm sorry. The older I get, it's, it's really convicting me how much money we spend upon our lusts. And we justify it. Well, I worked hard. Oh, really? So you're, you're more entitled to that than the people over here who also work hard and at the end of the day get a dollar fifty of wages and can't even scrape a decent meal together. I'm going to say emphatically, I don't support Christmas. I don't support Easter. Valentine's Day, all of that. They're all connected to paganism. And if you really want to go deeper still, not only paganism, but a money trail. <clears throat> Christmas, Halloween, and Easter are big money makers for the merchants. Always have been. <clears throat> Cards, masquerades, costumes, trinkets, icons. I find that most born-again Christians that gotta get caught up in Christmas are not serious students of the word. When I went to Frozen Chosen Baptist Church, I'm amazed that for as stalwart and as legalistic as they tend to be, that they freely put up the wreaths and the Christmas trees, which are all symbols of paganism. The wreath is satanic as it gets. And you can't go up and tell the pastor, even though he's a Bob Jones University graduate, and even Bob Jones University, have they not read this? That's why you run from legalism. They strain at gnats and swallow camels, and they do it all the time. I find more idolatry in today's evangelical church than ever has been that you tell a woman or man about Christmas and that they shouldn't be participating in this and watch the fight you have on your hands. They can't let go of it. It is an idol, and they're enslaved. The compelling need <clears throat> of once a year people emptying their pocketbooks, bank account, or paycheck to spoil their kids with a bunch of gifts they really don't need and to say Jesus is the reason for the season. That if we unpack the birth of Christ, there was nothing Christmas about it at all. The Magi brought gifts and laid them at the feet of our Lord. How many Christians lay on December 25th, at the feet of our Lord, there are thousands of dollars they spend on their children and everybody else to give them gifts that they really don't need while people are starving all around the globe. But that's okay. We Christians, we have this Jesus epiphany, warm, fuzzy feeling because it's snowing outside and all our family's over. And isn't it cutesy fun? While the rest of the world has it very, very hard. And we teach our kids that Santa came down the chimney and isn't that cute. We have a cutesy Christian culture. Not a biblical one, but a cutesy one. <clears throat> we even put Santa hats on the dog. Isn't he cute? We are a flaky, superficial culture that is caught up in euphoric-based experiences. I'm going to be so bold to say that 99% of evangelical Christian women would never even crack this open. I was turned on to this by men.
it was hammered into my head that women were more spiritually mature. I'm going to tell you, I refute that carte blanche. <clears throat> when I've had discussions with women who think they're godly and have all their K. Arthur precept Bible study books and Beth Moore conferences. What? What's that? Oh, you shouldn't put down the Catholic Church. That's not very nice. <laughs> and why not? Did, did you forget what God said in Israel about the people fashioning a log, taking, cutting down a tree and bedecking it in Jeremiah? He says, it's dumb. It can't even speak. And God is just laughing, going, really? This is your God? Okay. <clears throat> we come to the New Testament, all of a sudden the rules have changed. It's a new dodge, right? We're not going to talk about other religions. Well... The Catholic Church is enjoying that. And while evangelicals are playing footsie with the Catholic Church and did the ecumenical thing in the 90s, evangelicals and Catholics together, ECT, I hear Babylon bells ringing out. Babylon is going to unite all the world's religions. If you think I'm kidding, take a look at John Paul, Pope John Paul II, look at the popes, and look at how they were playing footsie with the voodoos, <clears throat> Islam. They're giving them all a group hug because they all have the same source. Satan? <clears throat> Excuse me, I can hear the church lady saying, ain't that special? We have the faithful remnant people that have been redeemed by the scarlet thread of the Christ's blood of Christ's blood we have a history of a Catholic Church killing the Waldenses the Montanans the Huguenots the Anabaptists drowning them in rivers with chains because they believed in baptism by immersion and they mockingly said you want to be baptized we'll baptize you to death <clears throat> the Catholic Church is no friend of God excuse me <clears throat> The Roman Catholic Church is not instituted by God. It is not initiated by God. Peter is not the first pope. That is the biggest lie. There are so many lies in the Catholic Church. The fingerprint of the father of lies is all over it. I understand there are Christians in the Roman Catholic Church, and to them I issue you a stern rebuke. Get out. If you truly want to follow Christ, you have no business. Well, I'm going to make a difference in here like heck you are. <clears throat> You are not commanded to sit before a priest who calls himself father, who holds up a cup full of abominations, which is a symbol that has been all throughout religious history long before the Catholic Church came with Isis, with Babylon, the woman holding the cup. This talks in depth about that. I wanted to do a spotlight on this book <clears throat> because I want my viewers to realize that for a long time we talk about stuff in videos first of all true faith if you start reading stuff you should get a hold of will make you much more intellectual than any atheist around this is not a book written by an ignoramus it's deep it goes deep into history even atheists will tell you that Christmas is not a Christian holiday. Even they know that much. <clears throat> Even a true scholarly atheist will tell you that the Roman Catholic Church has Babylon written all over it. And even though atheists say there is no God, even they know that there are false religions out there and they know that some of these things that are called Christian today aren't even truly Christian by biblical definition. <clears throat> How come atheists who say there is no God believe that, but Christians don't? I find that curious. It has been said that most evangelicals are like the ostrich, put their head in the sand and say, don't confuse me with this stuff, I just want to have a Jesus moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pacific celebrated Christmas as a born-again Christian. But before I started reading stuff, I was troubled. I thought, you know, the focus really isn't on Christ. 
that about the only focus I got on Christ was a Christmas Eve service at a church where they read the nativity story. We start lighting candles. And that's what the false religions did. <clears throat> the song Enigma. There was a backdrop of the dive off the wreck, the Oceanos. Starts off with what sounds like Catholic sounding choir music. <clears throat> Enigma means mystery. In fact, if you read in the King James Version, it says Enigma, Babylon. You start looking at rock music and pop music, and you start looking at Madonna and others that got symbols from ancient Babylon in the backdrops of their videos. <clears throat> when you start digging deeper, you find that we are literally living, surrounded by Babylonian stuff that has been passed on down to present day. Christians who think they're godly because they listen to this Christian guru or that Christian guru will look me in the eye and tell me there's something wrong with me because I say we shouldn't be participating in Christmas. It's more than just Santa Claus and reindeer and silly stuff. You start studying Clampus and you start studying Saint Nick was a nickname given to the devil. <clears throat> Up on the rooftop is Saint Nick. I think it's interesting that right now we have the movie Minions and it was my own son in the restaurant two weeks ago that pulled up on his screen, on his phone, said, Dad, look at this. <clears throat> it showed an old World War II photo. The Jews dressed in those silly little minion style things. And the Germans were mocking them and calling them that because they talked funny in their Hebrew. This is the same way. That Hitler was successful in galvanizing people to not have any compassion or feeling or not even think twice about the burning of the Jews stores, the terrorizing of their bodies and taking them out of their businesses, out of their homes and sending them to Auschwitz. We're doing the same thing right now. We're cutesifying everything. We're trivializing everything. And yet anti-Semitism is bleeding through every pore of our American society today. I'm amazed at the young, ignorant people on YouTube and social media that have a hatred for the Jews. Where does that come from? Satan. Make no mistake about it. The Jews got themselves in a pickle. When they cut off and rejected the Messiah, they have had trouble and hardship ever since. Hitler exterminated at least recorded six million, probably more, pogroms. Any child of God <clears throat> that believes that Israel is no more and that the promises for Israel are now for the church is at the height of biblical illiteracy. The Bible does not teach that. You have to make scriptures walk on all fours and maybe spiders because it just doesn't teach that. The Bible talks about the Messiah would be cut off and we're not in the 70th week of Daniel yet. The 70 week, that week is a set of years, seven years of tribulation. The Bible refers to the tribulation as the time of Jacob's trouble, which is yet to come upon us. Why Jacob's? Ah, because Israel is going to be the focus. God will make his available salvation offer available to all the world. Angels fly through the air, whoa, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth. The two witnesses will say, repent. This is what's going on. People will still shake their fist at God, even with calamity raining down all around them. We don't need you. Two-thirds of Israel is going to perish and go to the lake of fire. One-third of Israel will be saved. God is not done with the nation of Israel. 
If you think it's funny to stand around the water cooler and tell Jewish jokes as a Christian, shame on you. You are sinning. I'm tired of hearing that the Jews control the media and the Jews control this. I'm going to tell you, by the authority vested within me, the devil controls the media today. There are Jews, there are Africans, there are Asians, and there are Europeans all caught up in falsehood. The people outside of Christ are going to act like people outside of Christ, ignorant and blind to single out one specific race of people and say they're responsible for all the atrocities, I don't buy it. For all have sinned and fall short the glory of God. But I notice an inordinate amount of hatred towards the Jews. Well, guess what, blowhards? You have something in common with the Muslims. They hate the Jews, too. So let me guess, you support ISIS and radical extremist movements that terrorize and kill and behead little children? And yeah, that's going on right now. That a bunch of angry 20-something-year-old girls and boys in America are signing up for ISIS? They deserve what they get. ISIS is satanic. Islam is satanic. The Mormon Church is satanic. Jehovah's Witnesses is satanic. The Roman Catholic Church is satanic. All cults are satanic. They are initiated by the father of lies. To stand up and make that statement today in evangelical Christianity in the U.S. is met with a whole lot of people that are very offended. How could you say these things? Franklin Graham said Islam is a wicked, evil religion right on the heels of 9-11. The backlash against him was outrageous. Anything that takes away from Christ as the way, the truth, and the life, the sufficiency of his blood, is a false belief system. And I have the right to refute it and put it where it belongs, in the spiritual trash can. We are in Babylon, folks. Babylon is going to unite all the world's religions. The city is gone. But the spiritual, dark, satanic seeds of Babylon have taken a hold. There's only two groups of people in the world. Americans would have you believe that that hot woman is in a category by herself. American culture would have you believe that the GQ male, the CEO, the Fortune 500 company that has the Jaguar, the, the, the new Ferrari, the new DeLorean, no, there's only two groups of people. People are silly. They like to break it down. Well, he works on ships. I drive trucks and I'm an attorney. You are lost or you are saved. And if you want to be decked your little self-appointed Christmas tree with college degrees, with looks, with cars, with houses, with dogs and Starbucks coupons, go ahead. You're still going to hell. Same place that that guy you look down on for cleaning toilets is going. I think it's comical when you step outside of yourself and as a Christian start looking at the silliness of humanity. That whether it's a guy in Laguna or Cherry Creek or at the top of Trump Towers, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're going to be in the same place as the janitor that doesn't know Christ. They don't like that. The woman I knew was outraged and had a hard time giving her life to Christ when somebody told her if Hitler had repented, he would have gone to heaven. And she immediately said as a Catholic, oh, I can't accept that. People can't accept grace. The people that can't accept grace are the ones that don't believe they're sinners, number one. And number two, a lot of people forget that they've sinned against God. But when somebody sins against them, they want immediate justice right now. Be careful what you ask for. If you were to get immediate justice for what you did, you wouldn't be here. I would challenge and encourage every man and woman that is a serious student of God to get this book. It's all over the place. It's showing up in bookstores because people are dying that have collections of Christian books and they're just sending them to the thrift stores. 
We need to praise God that the thrift stores and other people haven't just said, oh, we're not selling this, so throw it all in the trash. You've got access to manuscripts. You better buy them up and start reading them before the day comes when they start tossing this stuff. There's no excuse for Americans to be illiterate and ignorant of spiritual things anymore. Well, Pacific, I don't want to focus on the Catholic Church. Don't, but you might want to read about how diabolical it is because the Catholic Church is focusing on the souls of men. <clears throat> there is no mother of God. Let me make that very clear. The Bible is extremely clear. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. Not my mama. Just like the old dinosaur sitcom. Not the mama, not the mama, not the mama. <clears throat> The inordinate affection and praise given to Mary would make even Mary disgusted. And Mary does not act like the feminized, liberated, offensive, obnoxious woman of the feminist political movement today. Mary would quietly say, no, do not do this. Christ is Lord. Catholic Church does not have the authority to canonize saints. Misnomer. <clears throat> Why? Paul says to the saints at Ephesus, to the saints at Corinth, to the saints at Philippi. Who makes saints, folks? God. What is a saint? One who's bowed his heart and knee to Christ and acknowledged that there is no way to heaven but through him and asked him to be his Lord and Savior. That's a saint. I'm a saint. The Catholic Church has created an ecclesiastical club-based system of control that is not based in holy writ. I'm not going to get into a line-by-line, tit-for-tat, jot-and-tittle expose of Catholicism. That is up to you to do. As a compliment to this book, I would encourage everybody to get A Woman Rides the Beast by the late Dave Hunt. If you believe you're a product of evolution, you live a hopeless, bleak existence that revolves around materialism, around the fads and silliness of the day and pop star culture and pop icon culture and pseudo-intellectualism. <clears throat> if you truly converted to Christianity and you start digging, your mind is enlightened by, whoa, I had no idea. That when I was in public school, all the stuff the teacher was giving us was boring. But now that I'm a Christian, now I am into world history. Now I'm curious about the origins. Wow, I had no idea things were so well defined. Anti-Semitism is going to increase. The Antichrist will turn on the Jews. He, when there's a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem, the Antichrist will stand up and declare himself to be God. And it says right in Matthew 24. Do not even go from the rooftop down to the house to get something. You better run for your lives. The time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob, the one named Israel, struggles with God. Israel struggles with God. God is not done with them yet. Catholic Church has never been a friend to the Jewish people. Never. The Catholic Church was there dogging people who got a hold of the word, saw the simplicity of the word. Martin Luther, with his 95 thesis, nailed to the church doors of Wittenberg, created a thunderclap through the Catholic Church. That Christians, true Christians, following the simplicity of Scripture, were told, recant or be burned at the stake. And they said... Light me fire, baby, because I'm not recanting. The Catholic Church is mystery, keeping the people from the simplicity of the gospel, making people twice as much a son or daughter of hell than they themselves. 
I don't care how big, I don't care how impressive that the Catholic Church has successfully gone into naive countries like Mexico and the Philippines and has had huge effect on people who are illiterate about the things of God. No offense to the Mexican people and the Filipinas, but it has been my experiences that they have tended to be naive when it comes to intellectualism. The Vatican City is one of the wealthiest cities in the world. Artifacts, gemstones, artworks, antiquities, stuff that is unbelievably valuable. The Pope claims to be infallible, but they're in a bulletproof Pope mobile. Live on the best of the best. Jesus Christ said very aptly about himself. Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. But the infallible Pope lives in luxury and splendor. And if you read Dave Hunt's book, A Woman Rides a Beast, read the atrocities the homosexual behavior of some of the Catholic popes, playing with nuns, screwing around. Catholicism is a satanic, evil system that dates right to Babylon. The symbols that they use, the golden cup, communion saying they're eating the body and blood of Jesus Christ is accurate. All false religion crucifies our Lord. All false religion tells our Lord, we don't need you. We'll do it Sinatra's way. Have fun. But don't be surprised when you slide down that grease pole and realize, uh-oh, it's a little hot down here. People get mad. I'm not about political correctness when it comes to matters of faith. If you get offended and butthurt, that's your problem. You show me in the scripture, and you show me historically that the Catholic Church is a good and godly belief system. And I'll tell you, Bolsky. Catholic Church has one billion adherents. I have been to a Catholic Church in the Philippines. And I watch people stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. They come out of church and the conversation is never about the word of God and the teachings of God and the fellowship of God. It's get back on to your own life, whether it's in the Philippines or in America. Many nuns are lesbians. Many nuns were unbelievably harsh. I still meet people today that went to Catholic schools and had their hands raked with rulers brought down on their hands for some misdeed done in class. Start looking at the history of nuns and priests, and it goes right back into false religions. The very word mass was not a Catholic origin. The symbols throughout the Catholic Church are penises and phallic symbols. They tie right back into Babylonian culture. Fertility cults, etc., The symbol given for Mary in the Catholic Church is no different than Gaia and all the female deities. Well, Pacific, what bearing does that have on me now? I know in our technological world, it's caught up in materialism in this present day and age. Everybody says, well, who cares about all that stuff? We're so entrenched by it that we don't realize how much stuff we picked up and surrounded ourselves with. You may have the latest iPhone and the, the latest computerized controlled SUV. But there's still a spiritual war going on. I'm going to tell my viewers this is not easy reading. If you're lightweight, you're going to have a hard time getting through this. People tell me all the time that the best things that they get from me are when I focus on the word. I find that interesting. People that love pleasure, people that love entertainment will run all over the place grabbing that. 
they're not going to camp here for long. The two Babylons. The Catholic Church is not dead. It is specifics believe that when the rapture of the church happens, that that's going to cause some <clears throat> fear, questioning, the disappearance of millions all over the globe, quite possibly could catapult all the religions to do a group hug with the Catholic Church and the Vatican. If you listen to the world, they constantly say, can't we all just get along? There's no reason why these religions can't get along. They all have the same father. So it'll be a false unity, a pseudo unity. And the Antichrist will use that one world religious system up to a point, and then he'll say, I'm tired of it, and then he'll turn on it. Satan is not interested in false religion. It is simply a tool to deceive. <clears throat> Satan is against God. And all his little followers think that Satan's their friend. Satan's going to laugh and say, you know, you're stupid. You, you worship me. God doesn't turn on his children. Satan does. Satan hates men and women because God made them. Satan doesn't care about your soul. I watch these young people today with the emo, satanic craziness, what they're doing to their bodies, the behavior, the darkness. Kids wanting to turn their names into Norwegian false religious dark stuff. They're too ignorant to realize that Satan's got them by the short hairs. That Satan will rape them, destroy them, cause them to commit suicide. And after they've done that, he'll just go, ha. People want to say there's no God. Oh, yes, there is. Yes, there is. I watch what happens in this world. And those that say there is no God, it's like, that's funny. Babylon's not dead. The Jews haven't been pushed in the ocean. They can't be. Even an atheist looked in on the Jewish people and remarked, how do they survive? There has to be a God. If any group of people has a majority of enemies against them that wants them wiped from the face, face of the planet, it's the Jews. How come they're still here? Because God. That's why. You mess with the Jewish people, you bring curse on yourself. For those that think they're cutesy and they're anti-Semitism, yeah, you're standing on thin ice, dude. The Jews didn't do a darn thing to you. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short the glory of God. <clears throat> to call the Jews Christ killers is incorrect. You killed Christ. Men and women crucified our Lord. Pacific crucified our Lord. Every single person alive or dead crucified our Lord. Our sins nailed him to the cross, but he did it of his own accord because it pleased the Father. The Jews were not Christ killers. What about the Romans? What about Pilate and Herod that stood by and, yeah, real men? If I was Pilate, I'd say, you know what? I don't know what you guys' problem is over here, but this man hasn't done anything. I'm done with this. Get out of here. And if you don't get out of here, I'm going to put all of you to the sword. That's what I would have done. But fulfilling of Scripture, the Father's plan. Pacific has to get ready for the day's events. I want everybody to have a nice day. I want my fans to get into deeper stuff. It will open your eyes, it will lighten you, it will give you joy to realize, whoa, there's a war against God, folks. It's time to get serious. The Specific, signing off. Bye-bye.